What's going on guys, it's Greg Meese Kiss Dies. Yesterday the PLL announced a lot of big news, there's a lot to break down, so let's get into some of the highlights. So yesterday basically Paul Rabel went on SportsCenter and announced new cities for each of the PLL teams. Our eight teams have been assigned to home cities. They also deleted a team, they also brought back an old MLL team. Uh, so again, there's a lot to go on here. They also added conferences, a Eastern and a Western conference, uh, and the teams got new logos, new color schemes in some cases. So let's break this down first, team by team. Um, I don't wanna make this into a roast video. There's a lot of business decisions that happen behind the curtain that are sort of hard for us to have visibility in. There's also probably a lot of future plans about expansion teams in new cities, so I don't wanna get too hung up on uh, what currently happened because in the next couple years there could be a lot that changes and a lot of stuff that um, fixes your complaints because I'm sure they hear them. So let's start off with the Boston Cannons. This one I was happy with. Uh, the team goes back to its original city of Boston. Uh, the logo looks pretty good. Not a lot of change there kind of from the original Boston. They got a circle shield, uh, a little B with a bomb, which I liked. Um, I don't think anybody can be happy with or unhappy with the Boston Cannons. That just makes too much sense. It would have been weird to not put them back in Boston. Uh, next up, we have the New York Atlas with a new Bull logo, same color scheme. I think this looks a little bit like the Chicago Bulls Bull. Um, I actually like the old Bull a little bit more, and I think that was a lot of the comments as people thought it looked a little cartoony. Uh, so New York kind of encapsulates the whole thing. I don't know whether they mean New York State or New York City, um, but you get Long Island in there, you get Upstate. I mean, it's a big state. A lot of sports have multiple New York teams, so you could probably justify more than one. Uh, overall, people seemed not to love the Bull. It's not my favorite, but I don't hate it either. It's okay. Uh, then you get the Philly Water Dogs. This makes a lot of sense. They played a lot of games in Philly, um, and they've got Michael Sowers, who's from Philly. Uh, so you got the purple color scheme. You have a new dog there. So previously they had a Bulldog. People, including me, didn't like that because the Bulldogs... I think generally don't like water, so that didn't make any sense. Now you've got a Great Dane, which they tied in because that's the state dog of Pennsylvania. Still not a dog that likes water. Uh, so I still find that fascinating, but it's, I like it more than the old one. It's a decent looking dog. They've got a cool one where he's like standing real big and tall. They've got a paw print uh, emblem. So overall, I like these logos. I can get past the water thing because the state dog thing makes sense. And I think Philly uh, is going to like the water dogs as their team. Next up, what will be my home state team is the Maryland Whip Snakes. Uh, so they went full Maryland on this, did a, a total 180 on the classic Whip Snakes color scheme, which was like a teal, uh, which I kind of liked actually. I thought those would, I think it's hard to change a team's colors this drastically. Uh, so it got the same sort of looking snake logo. The only thing I thought was weird about this is the word Maryland is like huge. And the word whip snakes is like really small. I thought they should have maybe flipped those, made whip snakes big, Maryland little, because it's very Maryland. Uh, yellow, red, black. They do have a lot of University of Maryland. Um, and even like the, the M emblem is just huge. Uh, the M is gigantic, and then they've got uh, basically a Maryland flag logo. So they're going full Maryland on the Whip Snakes. Now you have the Carolina Chaos. So this is going to envelop both Carolinas, north and south. Uh, slightly different Scorpion logo, same color scheme. I think this works. It gets a south team, covers a lot. Um, I don't have too much to say on the, you know, they have a state icon with a little scorpion tail. Apparently this scorpion is native to the Carolinas. So I think that works for me. I like the Chaos down there. Now, the new team you have is the Denver Outlaws. They're not new, obviously, brought over from the PL or the MLL. They deleted the Chrome altogether. So say with this, whatever you want, I'm sure they used a lot of data about uniform sales, social media engagement to say the Chrome were probably the worst performing team on the field. They were probably the worst performing field as far as merch, probably the worst on social. They want to bring the Outlaws back rather than making the Denver Chrome. Let's just give the state the team that they want, let's make it the Denver Outlaws. I think that makes sense. Uh, the Outlaws had the biggest fan base in the MLL. They used to consistently get 30,000 plus people to their uh, 4th of July game, which always had sick fireworks and a huge crowd. Um, I think this works, multiple championships. I have no problem with the Denver Outlaws. And I really have no problem getting rid of the Chrome. I like the Chrome. We have players we work with on that team. It was a really cool color scheme, one that we nicely had mesh that match with. But um, if they didn't want to add a new franchise, which is expensive, 
I'm fine with swapping the chrome out for the Denver Outlaws. Moving on to the last two, we've got uh, the Utah Archers, home now of the reigning champions. Uh, they got a nice little A with the Utah State in there, which I thought was clever. Big Archers logo, maybe also meant to look like a mountain. I can't really tell. Um, I also thought that it was funny that all this stuff was sponsored by Whirlpool. Welcome home from Whirlpool. I don't know. They didn't, I don't know how that ties in. Like, welcome home. You, got, you get a new dishwasher in your home. I don't know. Good for them for selling that sponsorship. I'm sure they got some money for it. Our final team is going to be the California Redwoods. People didn't love California because it's huge. It's like the height of the whole country almost. Um, it's very big. Don't know where they'll play, but they only got eight teams. You can only spread that so thin. So to pick a particular city at this time didn't make sense. Maybe at some point they'll split them and make them like the LA Redwoods and the San Diego some things, you know, you just got to think future wise. They got to future proof this while spreading eight teams across an entire country, which is not an easy job. So I give them a lot of credit. Uh, slightly different logo here, but for the most part, the California Redwoods are the same. I think that one makes a lot of sense. I don't have any complaints about there. So let's talk about a couple hot takes. Uh, number one, biggest snubs, definitely through the comments, the biggest snub people have was the Midwest in general, which I would define the two um, main candidates there were Chicago and Minneapolis, Minnesota, the PLO played in both cities. Chicago is kind of right in the middle. I could have seen an argument for a Chicago team. Again, somebody had to get snubbed, and you could see in the next couple of years an expansion goes to the Midwest or Chicago, or you just get a Midwest team to encapsulate all those states. Um, I think that's probably in their three to five year plan, if I had to guess. The other one was Texas. I thought the Texas Atlas just made way too much sense. Besides the Texas Atlas, that's a little hard to say. I don't love that. But they had the Bull logo. That would have gone really well in Texas. Texas is a huge growing market, a big state, a lot of people, big for sports. Um, and so, again, I could see Texas rounding out that, like, southwestern-ish area. Uh, the other thing that Paul Rabel addressed was that they have conferences, uh, mainly for like the all-star game and how many times you play each other in the season. It all makes a lot of sense except for the – Carolina in the Western Conference, because those are both on the East Coast. Uh, you know, you only got eight teams. You wouldn't want to do a three-team and a five-team conference. So you just put them in the West. I don't think it's that big of a deal. He did note that the Charlotte Hornets played in the West for a long time. So I think people were kind of blowing that out of proportion. Uh, finally, I think for my overall take, I want the Long Island Lizards to come back. They're clearly bringing back the most popular franchises from the uh, MLL, Long Island was always the one that I was really a fan of. They had like a sponsor with Sobe, which was a drink company way long ago. Um, anyway, Long Island Lizards, I think there's room for them to come back. Annapolis Bayhawks, it might take a little longer. Yeah, Carson's nodding his head. Uh, it might be harder to bring them back because Maryland's not that big. From uh, Homewood to Annapolis, Navy Marine Corps is like 40 minutes. You know, so I think we're gonna have to wait a little longer to get two teams in Maryland. Let me know if you have any questions, comments, discussions. Uh, put them down there. We'll make sure to respond, have a little conversation down there. Overall, I'm excited about it. I think it's a good opportunity for the PLL to sell more merch, all new logos, all new uniforms. I'm excited for new uniforms. I just think it brings a lot of news and buzz around the league. I don't see a lot of downside, and it also makes it really easy and natural to add new franchises because they're going to add them with cities rolling forward. Um, you know what cities we're going to play in consistently eight times a year. I don't know. People love to complain. They could have done anything and there would be people that would complain. I'm overall really happy with the changes. So let me know what you think. Thanks if you liked it. Subscribe if you have not and have a great day.